More than 1,500 books have been banned from school districts across the country, according to the free speech nonprofit PEN America. But through a new program at the Boston Public Library, teens and young adults from those communities can now access digital copies of those books. With the Books Unbanned initiative, which was started at Brooklyn Public Library last year, people aged 13 to 26 can sign up for a free card, and that lets them access the BPL's collection of challenged and banned audio and ebooks. You know, it has more than 1,300 titles, including 1984, The Hate You Give, The 1619 Project, and Queer There and Everywhere, 23 People Who Changed the World. The author of that book, Sarah Prager, joins me now, as does the president of the Boston Public Library, David Leonard. Welcome to you both. Thank you so much. Good to be with you. Yeah. So, so David, I want to start with you. Um, I, what made the BPL want to join in this initiative? Well, we really felt we needed to do something. Um, many of these challenges that we're seeing, uh, mostly in the last couple of years, um, although challenges have been with us for, for decades, right? Those, those have always existed. Um, but we really felt we needed to do something. And we were watching what Brooklyn had done, and they've had um, you know, a few thousand sign-ups um, over the course of the last year uh, for their program. So in partnership with our own Boston Public Library Fund, uh, we're able to make these materials available and in electronic format uh, to teens in the 13 to 26 year age bracket um, across the country. So they go to our website, they sign up, they get a special e-card, and they get access to this special collection that is funded by private donations. And for folks who haven't read uh, Queer There and Everywhere, I'm going to hold it up so folks can see it right here. Um, Sarah, talk to me about this book, and then I'm going to ask you about it ended up on banned lists. Yeah, so Queer There and Everywhere, uh, the expanded edition is 27 People Who Changed the World, just came out in June, is about these people, uh, 20 uh, LGBTQ plus people mm -hmm. who are from history, from the BCE era through today, and it shows how LGBTQ plus people have been changing the world throughout history and making contributions to society, inventing everything from the computer to the high five. And that's important for LGBTQ plus young people to know and non-LGBTQ plus people to know. And it's important representation. And uh, when I first saw my book ending up on banned book lists, it was very upsetting because mm -hmm. I knew that it could prevent this important representation reaching young readers. Because it takes a lot of work to put together a book like this. It's yes. a lot of background and study. This other book you have here, 50 LGBTQ plus people who made history also on uh, a banned list, uh, or many, perhaps. Multiple, yes. Yeah, yeah. So it takes a lot of work to put this together. And you obviously have a thought in mind, a reader in mind. And yeah. to see that it's being that privilege of, of being, or not even privilege, right, to learn about these things is taken away must be frustrating. Very, because of an important part of the process is translating history to be age appropriate for each of these uh, readers. So Rainbow Revolutionaries is a middle grade book and I also have an elementary school age reader book kind like Marsha learning from LGBT P LGBTQ plus leaders. And so each of these books is crafting uh, the content to be age appropriate. It goes through vetting through these major publishers, through multiple editors, mm -hmm. and that's the whole idea is making this content uh, interesting for the age level and often without reading it at all. Uh, people are complaining just because of the subject matter being LGBTQ and saying that the very existence of LGBTQ people is what's inappropriate, um, which is simply discriminatory, and saying that other people are not allowed to access these books if they want them for their children. And uh, that's one of the main things wrong with challenges and bans to these books. And David, as we talk about making sure that folks have access 
to these books. I know it's library's mission, their core mission, right. is so that people have access to knowledge. Yeah, we believe very firmly in the freedom of information and uh, that individuals, families, parents, uh, kids are, are really in charge of their own journey about what they need access to when they need information. Uh, we see a lot of the books ending up on lists today, these challenge lists, either being focused on the LGBTQ community or on topics of racial justice more broadly. And so um, these are the very um, topics that uh, more information, more understanding, uh, more unpacking of our own history is really needed on. And so, you know, it says free to all on the front of the Boston Public Library. And we want to make sure that that all remains front and center in the work that we do. So this information must be available to, to all, of our, all of our readers and, and patrons. Speaking of that work, I mean, this is obviously a very political issue. Did you think that libraries would end up in the politics that's Let's, let's be honest, very contentious yeah. right now. Well, I think li libraries throughout the country, whether it be school libraries or public libraries, still remain one of the most trusted institutions mm -hmm. in our society. And that is true locally. Uh, where we see great success is where um, the local community has a great relationship with their, with their public librarians and school librarians and workers. Um, those are the people who know the communities best and know what the information is that should be available, whether it's fiction books or non-fiction books. And we would say, leave it to the experts to decide what should be on the shelves. You don't have to read it if it's not for you or your family, but please don't make, um, make barriers, create new barriers for other people to access that information. And Sarah, I imagine the intent when you're penning a book is not to end up in a political argument that is raging across the nation. No, uh, it's not. It is to provide representation, education to young people and their families. Uh, and these books do do that, and they should be accessible to all. One of my concerns is um, librarians and teachers being afraid to buy these books um, preemptively because they might be challenged or uh, banned and get complaints from parents. Um, so that soft censorship of them not being bought to begin with, uh, not just being banned after they've been bought. and. Uh, this is happening everywhere. The, sometimes it's associated with, uh, you know, these books have been banned in Mississippi and Florida, mm -hmm. and those are the places that often might come to mind when we think of book bans, but 45 different titles were challenged in Massachusetts last year as well. Uh, and this is on the rise everywhere and happening here. And there is a bill um, introduced this session uh, to help um, empower the experts, uh, the, the librarians who should be curating these collections. Um, uh, and so peop one thing that people can do during Banned Books Week this week is uh, ask their local representatives to sign on to mm -hmm. Julian, Sen State Senator Julian Sears' uh, bill on the freedom of expression, which uh, helps to prevent these book challenges by allowing librarians to be the ones yeah. to uh, decide what books are allowed to be in libraries. Perfect. <laughs> All right. And we'll have that information on our website. Sarah and David, thank you so much for your time. Good to be with you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. For more information on the library's books on band card, head to bpl.org.